Good morning and happy birthday to Julian Scott. Julian Scott was born on February 15, 1846 in Johnson, Vermont, the fourth of eight children. When he was nine years old, his mother died while giving birth and he was raised by his father and his older siblings. Julian's father remarried in 1860, just before their family and their state were embroiled in the Civil War. He was only 15 when he enlisted as a musician in Company E of the 3rd Vermont Infantry Regiment. Two of his brothers enlisted in other units, and his older brother Lucian was wounded that October during the Battle of Balls Bluff. The 3rd Vermont joined the Vermont Brigade around Washington, D.C., where they spent a miserable winter. Diseases swept through the Union regiments, and the Vermonters were hit hardest of all. Julian spent his free time making sketches and drawings of camp life. When spring of 1862 arrived, the Vermont Brigade went with General McClellan's Army of the Potomac to the Virginia Peninsula. It was there that most of them first saw action. During the siege of Yorktown, the Confederate Army, drawn up in fortified defensive positions along the Warwick River, held off McClellan's much larger army for an entire month. On April 16, 1862, Four companies of the 3rd Vermont were ordered to launch an attack across the Warwick River at Dam No. 1. Once a toehold was established, one of them was designated to signal across to the others for support. Under sharp musket fire, these 200 Vermonters waded the creek. They captured the rifle pits of the 15th North Carolina on the far side, but the designated signal man had been mortally wounded during the crossing. The rebels quickly recovered from the shock of the attack, and the small band of Vermonters soon found themselves pinned to the riverbank and fighting for life against seven regiments of southern troops. Their commander was shot down, but they succeeded in fending off a series of Confederate counterattacks. After 40 minutes, they moved to extricate themselves from their hopeless situation. As the Federal troops fell back across the river, young Julian Scott made his way to the scene. Seeing that there were wounded men being left behind on the far side, he and 25-year-old Ephraim Brown went toward the rebel lines under fire to help bring them off. When they reached the edge of the now-abandoned Confederate rifle pits, they found 19-year-old Private John Backham, also from Johnson, Vermont, shot through the lungs. They lifted him up and began to carry him toward the water's edge when Brown received a musket ball to the thigh. Brown, unable to walk, fell to the ground. Though Backham was larger than he was, Julian hoisted him over his shoulders and waded across the creek. Scott recalled that during the crossing, the surface of the water looked just like sap boiling in the stream. The bullets fell so thick. Julian delivered the wounded Backham to safety on the Union side of the river, and then, incredibly, re-entered the water. He made his way back to Private Brown and carried him across the creek as well. The attack of the 3rd Vermont was a disaster and there was a similarly ill-fated attempt made later that afternoon by the 6th Vermont. Altogether, they suffered 192 casualties, and it didn't change a thing. But three Vermonters earned Congressional Medals of Honor that day. Julian Scott was one of them. He served out his enlistment and returned home to Vermont. Julian went to the National Academy of Design in New York to pursue a career in art. He traveled to Europe and to the Far West, where he made a series of paintings of Native Americans. But what established his fame were his paintings based on his experiences during the Civil War. Notable works include his portrait of General George McClellan, the death of General Sedgwick at Spotsylvania, and his paintings of the Vermont troops in action at Chancellorsville and White Oak Swamp. But possibly his most famous artwork is his impressive 10-foot by 20-foot painting of the Vermont Brigade at the Battle of Cedar Creek. The massive work was commissioned by the state of Vermont for $10,000, and it took Julian two years. He put out advertisements for Vermont veterans of the battle to send him photographs of themselves, so that every man in the painting is actually a portrait of one of the participants. It depicts the Vermonters in the later part of the battle, when the federal troops launched a counterattack and drove the southern forces from the field. General Sheridan, who commanded the Union Army at Cedar Creek, said that he liked the painting because it made the boys as they were, going in. It now hangs in the Cedar Creek room at the Vermont State House in Montpelier. Julian Scott passed away on July 4, 1901, at the age of 55, and was buried in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. He is still one of Vermont's most famous artists, and although he was only 16 when he earned it, the citation for his Congressional Medal of Honor is among the most impressive of any awarded to a Vermonter during the Civil War.
So once again, happy birthday to Julian Scott, a great Vermonter. And as always, it is morning in Vermont. Thank you and have a great day.